Hello everyone. I'd like to do a video where I go through the concepts of the normal distribution and how that relates to the concept of the Pareto distribution. I think that these things have been underlying in the discussions concerning, for example, gender differences. Um, I think the most recent examples are the famous interview between Jordan Pearson and Kathy Newman and the Google memo by James Damore in which he argued for the position that there are biological differences between the sexes. I've heard Jordan Pearson for example mention the Pareto distribution or the Pareto principle pretty often and then when talking about psychological personality differences between people, be it men and women or just people in general, the normal distribution comes about pretty often. However, um, I started thinking about how do these two ideas relate together and I think it's pretty cool what you can kind of, what kind of insight you can get if you start thinking about them together. First I'm going to go through the normal distribution and two kind of more specific situations regarding it and then I'm going to finish with the, the discussion about the Pareto distribution and what we can then gain from combining this, what kind of insight. Um, to the extent that, that I talk about big five and personality and differences between men and women, I'm not first of all talking in the manner that because men are like this, it would mean that all men are like that. And the same goes for women. These are generalities, statistical probabilities, and it doesn't mean that there are not individuals who do not fall into different kind of categories. And the other point is that underlying this discussion in regards to Big Five, I use the aspect model of the Big Five. So there are five, the Big Five traits, and each of those is broken down into two aspects. You can read more about that if you go check out Jordan Peterson's academic work. And well, his work has been cited a bunch of times, so that's a good place to start. Anyways, let's go to the normal distribution. So here we have the basic normal distribution. Generally, what it means is that uh, there's a phenomenon in which most things are average and some fall on one end of the spectrum and some fall on the other end of the spectrum. Fair enough, there are many of these kind of things. For example, in the big five, the trait conscientiousness is like this. Now, all of the traits are like this in the general population, but in regards to men and women, the distribution is pretty much the same. Okay, fair enough. Some people have really, really, really high conscientiousness, for example, and they work damn hard and they can't stand being idle. They like order and rules. And then on the other hand, you get people who are very good at relaxing and don't really like to stress too much about things. Okay, that's fairly simple. Now let's go to the idea of overlapping normal distributions. So here we got two normal distributions that overlap partly. So for the sake of argument we could say that this is a distribution for women and this is a distribution for men. And the distributions then in this case are for the big five trait agreeableness. agreeableness agreeable people are compassionate and they avoid conflicts, interpersonal conflicts. They like everyone to feel feel good um, and things like that. Disagreeable people, they say what they think, they don't really care about how other people feel. If they have some other motivations they deem more important and uh, more disagreeable people are, for example, more likely to get into prison because, well, they disagree about stuff. Okay, so with agreeableness, the distribution from men and women go something like this. The don't, don't take this as a next model, obviously. Look, it's my drawing. <laughs> uh, 
Um, for agreeableness, the idea is that the high end of agreeableness is there and the low end is here. So, things worth noting. First of all, the difference, if you look at the peak for men and peak for women, the distance here. It's not that long. So, in practice, it might be something like if you have 100 uh, women and 100 men, then about 60% uh, of the women are going to be more agreeable than the average man and vice versa. So the differences are not that great when you look at it from the normal distribution point of view. They are not completely <laughs> torn apart at least. The other thing to note is that while the difference between the section between the two distributions is not that great, the difference within a distribution is pretty huge. And that goes for the both distributions. So what it needs to be understood that is in regards to personality traits where there are sex differences, for example, still the differences within the sexes are greater than between the sexes. And this is worth thinking about because when people say that women are more agreeable and men are more disagreeable, like this is what it means that men are slightly on average tilted more to the disagreeable end and women to the other end, for example. Okay, so that's when the distributions overlap. Now, I don't know what is the correct term for this. I just coined differing spread for normal distributions. So the idea here is that you have two distributions and while there might not be this kind of um, overlap, different overlap between the distributions, there can be an, be an other kind of difference. And that difference it is how far the quality, the property is spread. So for example, for men, this flatter distribution works for IQ, intelligence, and for women, IQ distribution is, let's put it there, is a bit more tightly constructed. So what this means is that here at the high end of IQ distribution, the highest, highest, highest top end, they are, they are virtually only men. And here, those people who have really, 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 really low IQ, those are all men. And for women, on average, they are more close to the middle. So this, for example, from this you follows the kind of statements that the, on average, there are no differences between men and women in IQ. Because on average, you would get the same IQ for men and women if you pick on random. However, if you go to the extremes, they are populated by men. Now, why this might be um, from what I've read is that men vary more in their qualities because evolutionarily speaking it's more useful to vary the men who can then spread their genes around and it just go through the process of finding out what are the good qualities and for women the job from evolutionary point of view, is to pick the best men to propagate the genes. And therefore, women don't need that kind of variety or it's not as useful as for men because when you get the variety, then, you get, then the evolutionary process gets to choose from many different qualities, if you get what I mean. Anyways, this is not the bio video about biology and I'm not that great in biology, so I hope that made a little bit of sense at least. Now, let's go to the Pareto distribution. So the Pareto distribution is also known as the AD20 rule. And sometimes even in economics, it's called the Matthew principle. It's uh, taken from the Bible where it said something along the lines that from, for, what? from those that have all shall be taken and 
to those that have more shall be given or the other way around anyways so the idea there is that there is some sort of disparity in output between different things uh, and when i say different things i mean different things this the Pareto principle can be seen in action or it can be observed in the size of heavenly bodies it can be seen in the size of trees and for human endeavors stuff like the distribution of money points scored in sports paintings painted books sold virtually anything you can think of the parallel distribution can be observed there so let's look at the numbers a bit this is where the 80 20 rule may might be the most useful name for the distribution so suppose you get 1 million people doing something and their total output obviously is 100 percent now 20% from that million, that means 200,000, produce 80%. Now, and if we go down this chain, we will find out that 12 people produce around 20% of the output. And on a graph, it would look like this. Most of the people are around here doing nothing and then when you get to the top 12 that might be a tiny tiny dot around there they produce 20 percent their output is absolutely ridiculous for example picasso painted something like 65,000 paintings in his lifetime like what how, how but some people are just so prolific fair enough this is the idea of the Pareto distribution. A small number produces a ton, and most people produce nothing in a given realm. Now here is what I've been thinking about combining these two. Let's stay with this graph, but let's draw a couple of, couple of normal distributions here. We'll go with the with one distribution first. Sorry about that. So this area here is where I think this is when I visualize this, this is when the stuff clicked. So most people are average and they produce a little bit. But the more you get to the extreme, suppose this is, well, let's go with the um, agreeableness and Suppose this is the disagreeable end of things. There's a little group of people who are so disagreeable that they commit most of the disagreeable things. Crime, for example. And they're just off the charts on that, like mass murderers or, or uh, serial rapists or whatever. Like They are super, super, super disagreeable people who don't care about other people's feelings, who don't care about rules. So they will be off the charts in here, off, off the charts in, in this one. Now, the two best predictors for long-term success in stable societies are IQ and conscientiousness. So smart, hardworking people succeed. Okay, let's think about conscientiousness first. That's pretty simple. Here's the conscientiousness. There wasn't that much difference between the sexes. So... Just based on conscientiousness, this area, the, mo the highest output area, would be populated evenly by men and women if conscientiousness and IQ are the only variables. Of course, there are other, but those are the biggest. But now let's take the IQ. So this would then be the distribution for men. They reach to the end. And for women, the same distribution will look something like that. And now here's the kicker, here's the punchline, so to speak. For things where IQ is super important and where the competition is super tough, there is going to be this little group of men that are, are going to do most of the 
high-end stuff who are going to have the highest output and therefore they are going to produce the uh, improportionate imp amount of the output and they will be the people you hear about because they are the phenomenons. Is that the right way to say about it? Well, wh whatever. They are, the, they are the known people, the celebrities of the field, so to speak. And, well, I don't know what to make of this. If somebody knows how to disprove any of this or show me to places where um, there is info that shows that there is something wrong with this, I, I'd be happy to hear. Um, as far as I understand, these seem to be pretty, pretty solid facts and the thinking I laid out, I can't spot a mistake in that. Maybe there is one. But I think this is something worth thinking about. And just on a personal note, for example, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not the strongest guy. Uh, I'm not the best in anything. I don't take it personally that there are some people in given realms who are just off the charts doing all that great stuff. So... If, there, if you have a tendency to think about things in the terms of why is that guy in the top, that's so unfair. Well, sometimes it's unfair. Some people are really good at manipulation and getting, getting promoted, so to speak, in a given hierarchy just through immoral means. But that's not the whole story. And for example, in Western societies, the IQ and conscientiousness, those are based on the best science we've got on the on the matter those are the best predictors so i hope this helped to shed some light on the matter um, and maybe give you some insight on it and i guess that's that thanks for watching